With me now is Professor David Oliver, Clinical Vice President at the Royal College of Physicians, leading the college's theme on care quality. Hello to you. Hello. Now, what does care quality encompass? Well, there's a, a various definitions, but to try and put it in you know, categories, if you like. The first is, is the care we deliver for patients effective? In other words, are we doing things that work and are based on clinical evidence? Is the care equitable? In other words, do we have equal access to care between rich, poor, disabled, able-bodied, uh, different communities? Is it efficient? So are we, for the limited resource we have in healthcare, delivering the best care we can for the money we have? Is it patient-centered? So it's all very well doing, say, an operation or giving a treatment that does the job, but we have to take into account patients' preferences and measure things that matter to patients. And then the other thing is, is it timely? Because it's no good having high quality care if you can't access it for hours or months. And uh, is it safe? There's a big concern right now about patient safety. We might deliver a treatment that works quite well, but if it has a high risk of complications or risks like infections, we have to minimise those. So it's getting all of those things right. And where do you think the UK falls short in achieving this? And what are the challenges? Well, it's not just what I think. There's a lot of international reports comparing different health systems. And the consensus is the UK does very well on efficiency and value for money. We have a relatively few doctors and nurses and beds. We do extremely well internationally on equity, so access between rich and poor and different groups we do well. However, on some outcomes in care, things like survival rates from cancer or stroke or heart disease, we're sometimes in the middle. And we have an issue about variation sometimes that we have still quite big inconsistencies between different sites. As far as being person-centred or patient-centred, there's a lot of still very good feedback and high public satisfaction with the NHS. It's still very popular with the public, but I think there's so much pressure on both hospital and primary care services that sometimes we can forget people and we can forget their carers and not be responsive enough to their needs. And what responsibility do you think that physicians have to pursue quality improvement and how do they fit it into the, their role? Well, I think it's a vital part of what we all do. We're there primarily to deliver care for patients. And at the level of your, your jobbing physician, really, who's a member or fellow, they may be leading a ward team, they may be leading a, a clinic team, and they have a responsibility to not only deliver good care but improve what they're doing year on year. But, of course, doctors are often in leadership roles as well, so they may be the lead clinician for their department or the clinical director for their service, and they have a key role to combine their clinical day job with providing that leadership across the service. And how does the Royal College of Physicians support physicians in doing this? You know, what tools or resources do you provide? Well, we do a variety of things, and bear in mind we do this with 31 different medical specialties, so we're quite a broad church. We produce evidence-based guidelines commissioned by the National Institute for Clinical Excellence that set out what good looks like. We help produce good research evidence uh, to improve the quality of care. We do service accreditation for some schemes where we give a kite mark to teams that are doing all the right things. And we do these big national clinical audit programmes, which are the envy of most other countries. So you take something like, say, people with hip fracture or people with stroke, and we can describe for every service in the country how well people are doing at individual patient level and at service level and describe the, the variation between different services. But where we want to go is spend more time helping people to improve. So we're already good at setting out what good looks like, measuring whether people are doing the right thing. But the next stage is to do more practical kind of roadside assistance to help people get better. But you facilitate mentoring, do you? So yeah. a trust that's doing well will come and help. And trust yeah, them. so we have something that we've started quite recently called the Quality Improvement Hub. And people will come to us for assistance in understanding their own service better, helping to identify and measure their own solutions. Uh, and one of the examples there is our future hospital work, where we're working with a number of sites around England and Wales, helping them to improve their local services with quite a lot of patient and user involvement. We also do something called invited service reviews, where a service may be struggling in some way, and we can get some experienced clinicians to go in there, speak to everybody, and provide some fairly grounded, hopefully, credible recommendations on how they might get better. And what more or could do you think the Royal College of Physicians do in pursuing quality improvement? Well I think quality improvement in terms of helping local teams improve what they do is a really coming area in healthcare. 
because a lot of the difference you can make to patients, the devil is in the detail at what you do on the ground in your local service. And those solutions have to be tailored to where you're working in your local context. So we want to start equipping both junior doctors and senior doctors and the teams they work with with more of the skills to measure what they're doing and improve it continuously, build that kind of capacity. Um, the other thing is just working with national bodies because increasingly NHS improvement, NHS England want to help minimise variation between services, make the offer of care more consistent and they want to work with us and other Royal Colleges to help get that right. Well Professor Oliver, thank you very much. Thank you, it's been a pleasure.